23-year-old brummy Dave Wheatley lives with his girlfriend Claire. He's about to embark on a new life at university, but he's struggling with a dark secret, a secret smothered in salt and vinegar. Let's get a portion of chips, please. Dave is addicted to chips. My life pretty much revolves around eating chips. Just delicious, you know. Without chips, I wouldn't eat. It's like a whole bouquet of flavours. Dave's diet consists of chips, chips, and uh, chips. 365 days a year for almost 20 years. It's be French fries. Now, these are absolutely gorgeous. And don't even think about giving him anything else. I don't ever eat fruit or vegetables at all. I have a problem with the colour and the smell of the green. But now Dave's one-track diet has finally had its chips. It's just stopping me from living my life to how I want it. In Dave's corner, in the fight against chips, will be... psychologist Felix Economakis. If your brain is associating feelings of being powerless or being bullied with certain foods, yeah. you're going to build up a reaction to that. And nutritionist Charlotte Watts. A vitamin is something that we must have in our diets daily. Without those, this is what can happen. They've got just four weeks to reverse a habit of a lifetime. But will Dave be able to go the distance? I feel sick. I feel a bit sick. I just really, really, really want some chips. You seem a bit fed up. I've done nothing but support you and you sit there and say that. I just lost it and I basically just, just broke down in a heap on the floor. <laughs> I am so desperate to change just so I can feel normal. Dave's eating problems started at the age of four. We all used to sit around the table and everyone would have their like pieces of calf meat and their broccoli and their sprouts and things. And I was always last one to leave the table because I was always sort of told, you know, eat what's on your plate, it's good for you. And I really didn't like it. That's how I got spoke to when I was younger. Um, our mum made a meal, wherever it was, and we all sat down, we all let it. Dave's parents divorced when he was young, so poor mum got lumbered with Dave's dodgy diet. The compromise for me was, at least I got him to eat something, OK? It was chips, but I would make them as healthy as possible and I'd cook them in the oven so they weren't surrounded in fat. But it was chips with David or nothing at all. Nearly 20 years later, and Dave still has an aversion to almost all foods, except his beloved chips. And don't get him started on the veggies. For me, I think I'm really really sort of afraid of like green foods or sort of the smell of green food when you break it open. It just, that whiff gets into you and I'm just like, I oh, really, really don't want to eat that. It smells like the garden. I don't want to go into the garden and eat the grass off the floor. Girlfriend Claire is committed to getting him eating green and it doesn't come much greener than pasta with pesto. No, no that really, it, it smells really gross. Seriously, it smells really gross. I genuinely don't know what, what green smells like. <laughs> I don't know what it is that he's smelling. Try and just take a bite of it. Oh my god, well done. Oh. Oh. I actually hate you a little bit now, Claire. Dave's lifelong diet is starting to take its toll. Deep fried spuds, it seems, are not the food of love. I'm 23 and I can't go to a restaurant with my girlfriend. We've never been out for a meal. I mean, what would he eat? It just wouldn't be an enjoyable experience for him or me. It makes me feel ashamed that I'm not grown up enough to be able to eat what everyone else eats. And I, I really wish that I could. Dave not only has to come to terms with giving up chips, he's also about to face another huge life change. In about a month's time, I'm going off to university. So I'm going to meet loads of new people and I don't want to have to explain my diet to them. I don't want to be an outcast straight away. It's just stopping me from living my life to how I want it. But it's not just his social life that's really concerning Dave. I don't feel like I'm a healthy person inside. I don't feel like... I don't think I think I feel like I should, you know. My worry is that David won't reach his 50s. He'll have clogged his arteries up with his appalling diet and Aya will be doing what every parent dreads and that's burying her child before he reaches his full potential. It's 
day one of a month-long dietary makeover. Dave's in London to meet the experts who'll help him fight his food fears. Hi, Dave. Hi, guys. I'm Felix. Hi, Felix. This is Charlotte. Hello, Hi, Charlotte. nice to meet you. How are you feeling? Um, a little bit nervous, but I guess that's to be expected, really. Other than that, I'm all good. Excellent. Don't worry, you're in safe hands with us. If you want to come this way, we've got something to show you. Cool, thanks. First things first, messages from family and friends. OK, Dave, the next few weeks are going to be tough. Okay. So we want to show you something that you can use as a motivational tool. OK. OK, we'll leave you to watch it. Cool. Listen up, fat lad. <laughs> what we need you to do is sort your life out, right? Because this eating thing's going to have to change. You are going to end up pegging it early, and we don't want that at all. And we would really love it if you could stay around just that little bit longer. Hi, David. It's Mum. We'll do whatever it takes to keep you eating healthier, because my one fear in this life is that you will not get to my age. You're not going to get there if you carry on with this diet. I just want you to know that I love you, and I'm really proud of you for doing this. I know that you're not finding it easy, and you're quite scared about what's going to happen. It really upsets me to think about what you might be doing to yourself. Hopefully, things will be OK. So, Dave, what's it like for you to hear those comments? Um, I feel like kind of sick for making them all worry that much and making them all think that I'm not going to reach my mum's age. You know, I make jokes that I don't want to get old and sort of decrepit, but I don't want to die this early either. Does that feel quite motivational for you then? Yeah, it just makes me not want to let them down. Yeah. I really don't want to let everyone down because I feel like I've already sort of done that with the first like 23 years of my life by not eating properly and sort mm. of making them worry that much. Mm. OK, so let's go and take a look at what you are actually eating. OK. OK. Let's go. Felix and Charlotte begin their work with a nutritional wake-up call that should test even Dave's devotion to chips. <laughs> so, Dave, what do you think this is? It's a lot of chips. Yes, it is. <laughs> well, we've calculated that this is the amount of chips that you eat over an entire year which is a staggering 300 kilos of chips. So 300 that's... kilos. That's more than three times your body weight. It's sort of mind-boggling. It makes me feel a little bit sick, actually. Oh. Like, just, <laughs> just sort of looking at it and sort of seeing it all there, it's just a bit, it's a bit sickly. The chips aren't the only thing you're eating. We've also calculated the amount of salt that you put on those chips in an entire year, and it comes to this amount. <laughs> That's a lot of salt. Oh. Are you worried about this amount of salt going in your body? Yeah, I know you're supposed to have like a pinch of salt a day, and that looks like a hell of a lot more that's than a, a pinch of salt. Yeah, that's a lot of pinches. <laughs> we actually also calculated the amount of oil needed to fry this amount of chips. That's actually 30 litres of oil. <sighs> now, when you fry that oil, that oil becomes very damaging. There's damaging fats which damage your heart. I don't even know where the hell that's going. I don't, I don't want to put that and that mm. and everything into my body anymore. I'm done with it, you know. So, what is your goal for the next four weeks? To just be able to eat normally, to not do that, to not to rely on chips, just to be able to eat normally and eat fruits and vegetables and actually have a healthy, balanced diet. The challenge in the next few weeks is going to get Dave to try new tastes and new textures. He has a very limited palette of foods at the moment. They're quite childlike foods. We need to get him to try new things outside of that range and to move him away from chips. In four weeks, Dave will face the ultimate challenge, eating a proper meal with his family for the first time in 20 years. There's sort of like a lot to think about. I just sort of need time to sort of uh, 
detox from everything that's going on, just sort of take a step back and just really think about things. But nervous about the next few days and what the future holds and what's going to happen, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Dave's clearly shocked by what he's seen so far, but Charlotte hasn't finished yet. There are more home truths to come. She's arranged for Dave's blood to be tested by Dr. Pixie McKenna, a GP with a special interest in eating problems. This morning, Charlotte's brought Dave to hear the results. I'm actually really worried that my, the way I've been eating and the fact that I haven't eaten anything like with any vitamins or minerals in the past like 10, 20 years Hello. has actually really damaged my health, sort of beyond repair. Really nice to meet you, Dave. Hi there. I'm intrigued to know, how are you feeling at the moment? Are you feeling fit? Are you feeling well? I wouldn't say I was fit and energetic and whatnot. Like, I'm, I'm an energetic person, but I don't really feel like I have loads of energy. OK. One of the things that came up in your blood results was that you are deficient in a vitamin called vitamin B12. Long-term vitamin B12 deficiency can result in problems with your balance, with your vision, your hair can fall out, your skin will become quite washed out looking, you'll get cracks around your mouth. Shall I show you what you'll look like? Dun, 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 dun. Oh, that's, horrible. Horrible. that's ridiculous, that's is so it? horrible. It's really, really horrible. So a vitamin is something that we must have in our diets daily. Without those, we can't function and this is what can happen. You are so deficient in vitamin B12 that really we need to boost your resources here, now, today. Vitamin B12 can be found in most meats, fish and dairy products. However, you don't find it in fruit, veg or chips. The body needs vitamin B12 to create red blood cells and keep the nervous system happy. Nearly there. After years of a monotonous chip diet, Dave's vitamin B12 level is so low that Dr. Pixie needs to take immediate action and give him a boost. In a couple of days, it will become apparent yeah. and you will feel so much more energetic. I cool. so <laughs> promise you. All right? Now this... Dave also has high levels of triglycerides, which basically means a lot of fat in his blood. The tube represents Dave's bloodstream and Dr. Pixie wants to demonstrate how seriously the fat could be affecting his circulation. So, Charlotte's on hand with some fat. Oh! Clogging up. Look at that, Dave. That Can you see that? Is... Flowing around in your circulation. Blocking the circulation. The circulation may be to your brain, give you a stroke, to your heart, give you a heart attack. Blood vessels in the back of your eyes make you blind to your kidneys, giving you kidney failure. It's really serious matter. Good evidence for getting rid of the chips. Good thing is you're only 23, which means you've got massive scope to prevent this happening. The way you have to do that is through diet. And we'll go and look at some foods that are going to help you prevent this, OK? It's really easy to deny the link between what you're putting in your body and what is actually happening inside. And I'm really hoping that that really clear illustration is going to make him motivated to change. After seeing all that, just um, just feeling a bit depressed and a bit sad, actually. It's sort of just like not nice knowing that, that all that's going on. I've done that, basically. It's my fault. Uh, oh, today was horrible. Why? Because they show me this absolutely horrible, horrible, horrible worst picture ever of me, basically, what I could look like in the future if I carried on the way I did. You're going to have to tell me if it's, like, upside down. Yes, <laughs> it's upside down. That's a horrible, horrible... See, look at you. It's, it's horrible in all yeah, of its nerves. OK, yeah, it's pretty horrible. You're never going to kiss me again. Oh, if you get those boils all around your mouth. <laughs> See, look, that's all you're going to think about now. I just think that you should 
remember that horribleness and just use it and focus on that whenever you feel like you want chips or whenever you feel like it's really difficult. Like, don't just ignore it because... No, I've got, I've got, I'd rather focus on other things, something that is a bit more positive. Today is Dave's first one-on-one -on -one session with nutritionist Charlotte. She needs to understand the full extent of his food problems. If there's anything green, I know I'm going to, like, my brain's going to instantly start saying no, no, no. The last thing I, I'd really like to see in there is, like, um, this is like a big plate of, like, cold cabbage or broccoli. Hi, Charlotte, it's Dave. So, it's time for a taste-off. OK, Dave, we're going to take this step by step okay. and I want to find out what you can manage and what you can't. OK. So, looking at the table, what are your first impressions? There's some things that look gross. Lots of things that look gross. OK. Sprouts. 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 <laughs> broccoli. No, broccoli. Yeah, OK. Cauliflower. Why, why those in particular? Because uh, I remember eating them as a kid and they were horrible then. Okay. You can sort of smell the... Chlorophyll in it. Okay, that's an interesting thing. Can you just grab that plant closest to you? Now, this is basil. Can you smell that and tell me what that smells like? It smells like green. It really smells so like you've green. You've got blanket green. Yeah. That's that, a very pungent yeah, smell. I know, it really, different. really smells like green, though. That's a really pungent smell of green to okay. me. Okay. Let's try the cucumber. Okay. Do you want to just grab a slice of that, actually? It's savoury. Yeah. So that just reeks of green. <laughs> <sighs> okay, is that seeds in the middle? Like, is that clear seeds? Like, what, what are they? Oh, they're, ba they're barely vaguely. Yeah. I'm going to avoid those then. Okay. Okay, did not enjoy that one. All I could taste was green all the way through. Every single crunch of that was just pure greenness. <laughs> what I can say is that that doesn't mean that you dislike it forever. OK. okay it it ta takes, like, your children about, you know, up to 17 times to learn to like a food. OK. So Charlotte then steps it up a gear. Let's move on to the big guns. Let's try some broccoli. Because there's... It's so good for your heart. But no-one likes broccoli. I love broccoli. Do you want to grab a little bit? Oh, that is a little bit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Luckily, that bit was right there. But it just looks like you shouldn't eat it. It really doesn't look like oh, someone it, should go out there and go, mmm, that looks delicious. I think actually to say that human beings should not eat plants is proven to be a little a bit of a redundant statement. <laughs> it just smells like Sunday dinners back when I was, like, five years old again. It's just a horrible, horrible smell, OK. Already, I hate you. <sighs> Come on, go, go. It's okay, it's okay. <sighs> Again, it sort of tastes exactly how it smelt, and just like cold green. I'm, very, I'm trying really hard to yeah. just shut my brain off and just sort of be a bit more open-minded towards everything. I think today went really well for Dave. It's one thing to try lots of little amounts of things, though, and it's a different thing to really incorporate that into a new diet. The thing that really sort of stuck out for me, it was the, uh, the broccoli. It instantly took me back to when I was a kid, and sort of having that sort of placed in front of me, knowing that I was going to have to eat it. Dave's back in Birmingham, and it's day one of a new diet with no chips. Good morning. morning. Do you think we should open it now? Yeah. Charlotte sent Dave home with a hamper filled with food to get him started. Open it. Oh, looks really good. I bet there's a thousand green things in there. Oh, that's really nice. Here you go, look. Do you reckon these are seedless? I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure they're seedless. Don't worry, if there is a seed, you can just. That's okay. Dave, did you just eat 
that grave so quickly and casually. Yeah. <laughs> well done. It was sweet. Charlotte's also sent recipes, tips, and clear instructions to chuck out the chips. Goodbye, curly fries. It's time to go cold turkey. Dave may be off the chips for now, but in order to keep up the progress, psychologist Felix needs to understand the root of his eating problems. You've been eating mainly chips for most of your life. And when did this start for you? I can't actually remember a time when I wasn't. I can remember times when I was really, really little eating, but like as far as I can remember back, I've pretty much had chips like all the time. Because what I usually find is, let's say, in the course of normal development, we develop an eating pattern. Mm -hmm. So at some point, this normal progress just got derailed somehow. Yeah. And I'm really curious about what happened at that point that just switched you to this new track. I, I remember my dad used to come eat like Sunday lunches, and I remember like growing up really not enjoying Sunday lunches. Like, I didn't enjoy the meat, I didn't enjoy any of the vegetables. He was always one of these people that just said, like, if you don't have it now, you'll have it for your tea, and if you don't have it for your tea, you'll have it for your breakfast. And I remember always hating Sunday dinners because I would always be the one left on the table with a plate full of meat and carrots and vegetables and stuff that I really didn't want to eat. Our brain learns by association. If your brain is associating feelings of being powerless or being helpless or being sort of coerced or bullied with certain foods, yeah. you're going to build up a reaction to that, yeah. a sort of aversion to that. So what are the good things, the positives about chips that you like to carry over into your other eating habits? One of the things that I really loved when I was growing up was my mom used to make home-cooked chips, and I used to love them. They were, like, amazing. Special treat, like birthdays, Christmas sort of thing. I just sort of want to continue that sort of feeling where I'm actually happy to eat a food that I'm, I'm excited about. At the moment, it sounds like it's a little bit black or white. Vegetables and meat are associated with your dad trying to coerce you, or bully you into eating it, and these lovely homemade cooked chips you associate with being welcoming and love. So, I mean, the strange thing is, David, this is not really about the food. This yeah. is about the emotions associated to the food. Yeah. You're, if your dad sat you there saying you're going to eat your chips until they're all finished, you say, yeah, oh, it would have been the other way around. The other way around, exactly. Yeah. So it's really about breaking that connection. Yeah. Well done. It's the start of week two, and Dave's still off the fries, but he's struggling with new foods. This morning's homework challenge from Charlotte, to eat a mango. I have never, I think I've seen this, but I've never actually eaten one, or I don't think I've ever seen anyone eating one themselves. Yeah, I can feel something hard in the middle. Okay, Ooh, that looks like a giant stony thing. Okay. Yeah, my brain's thinking about it too much now. And I feel sick. <laughs> I feel a bit sick. It's just the textures and stuff now are sort of ruining it for me. Like, for now, I'm just done with the mango. Over the coming days, Dave's progress is very slow and not exactly steady. This morning, for breakfast, I had um, a bunch of grapes and uh, an apple. So that's like two of my five a day. And then um, I had some crisps and I had a donut because I was really hungry. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Dave's ready to cook and hopefully eat an omelette for the first time. How are you feeling about eating the omelette? Excited? I don't really know. Just a bit hungry, really. <laughs> you seem a bit fed up. Yeah, I'm not eating what I want to eat, I'm eating things that I don't want to eat yet. I just really, really, really want some chips, that's all I really want to do. 
I just eat a portion of chips and then I sort of think, oh, I can get through another week if I'm not having them. Well, I so, know you want to eat the chips, but I think at the same time you don't want to eat no, them. I don't, I don't want to eat the chips because of all the bad shit that happens and all that stuff and yeah, 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 all that, yeah, it's bad for me, but it's still like, I still like them. I still, oh, want, no. I, I still would like to have a meal that I'm actually going to enjoy oh, no. rather than just a meal that I'm just cooking for to keep trying it. I understand why I can't eat the chips and whatnot, so I'm trying to focus on that, but when I just get down about myself, it's a really horrible thing to feel about myself constantly, because all I do is just do something that I actually enjoy. With Dave on a real low, Felix invites him to London. He wants to tackle what he sees as the root of the problem, family mealtimes. OK, so Dave, what do you think this represents? A table and chairs dinner time. I don't know, saying a child's dinner time. That's right. This is you. That's cute. Armed with cardboard cutouts of Dave's family, Felix hopes that Dave can overcome the negative memories associated with family meals. You wouldn't eat it. End the story, full stop. And that's why the old, you'll sit there till you know you eat it. If you don't eat it now, you'll have it for breakfast in the morning. Go for it. <laughs> You'd end up thinking, oh, the poor kid's going to go hungry. What will you eat then, David? And Dave said, Well, you can do me chips, and I will eat chips. Here you are. Everyone else is eating all the food. Your brothers are making some snide remarks. Your parents, there's a slight tension. Your mum says, just leave him. Your dad's saying, well, you know, should he get away with it? And, you know, I had to eat what was put in front of me. Mm -hmm. What are you feeling right here as your three-year-old self? Just feeling like I'm being singled out and I don't, I just want to do everything that everyone else is doing. What's it like for you to feel singled out? What emotions are attached to that? Uh, just unhappiness. So, like, most meal times wasn't fun. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a good time for me. So I'd like you here as young Dave now to go into your father's shoes and we're going to ask you questions as dad. You've heard from your son that he's feeling upset here. He doesn't enjoy this. So where are you coming from with this kind of pressure? Why is he being difficult? That's like, I just want him to eat what everyone else is eating. I just want him to be normal, basically. I just want him to carry on doing what everyone else is doing but it just seems to be being really difficult about it. Now, some parents may say, I don't care, eat what you like. They're kind of indifferent. Indifference means that they don't care. So, strange enough, even though your father was angry, his anger was partly taken personally, but also because he cared. Yeah. He wanted you to eat something right, something good for you. Yeah. The problem here is that he didn't know exactly how to express that care. Yeah. So, what we'd like to do now, I'd like you to advise your dad on how Dave needs to be treated. Dad, what I really needed when I was a kid was for you to sort of back off, for you to be a lot more supportive. Excellent stuff. Now, be dad. Okay. You've got the benefit of this new insight of what's really needed. How would you respond now to your young son instead? Hey, Dave, I was only doing what I was doing because I love you and because of how I was brought up, but I realised that we're not the same. What I wish I'd done was more caring and more actually listening to what the problem was rather than just thinking you're being awkward. How do you feel towards your dad now, having experienced this? A lot better. I think we would have been... A, I think we should be a lot closer than we are. I think it caused a lot of tension that we didn't actually need because I know he was doing it for the best intentions. Excellent. It sort of made me realise that we sort of lost a lot of good childhood memories. And uh, I don't speak to my dad that much now. It just made me really want to speak to him and actually just go out and do stuff with him. I sort of want to make happier memories with my family regarding food than just these sort of unhappy ones that I always usually associate with. So I sort of want to get some happiness back from my family. Claire has joined Dave in London and it's dinner time. They're in the food mecca of the East End to grab a bite to eat. What could be simpler? Oh, look, there's English here. 
seafood. I'm not really a fan of seafood, am I? Oh, it comes with chips. See, everything comes with chips. You know what I really want to try is call on the pub. No, <laughs> you're not coming with me on this one. No. How would you feel about a toasty? I think then we're going into the uh, areas of stringiness. And I'm actually really hungry. You're hungry now. I'm starving. Oh, <laughs> Two hours later, and the hungry couple settled for coffee and cake for one. You should try the cake. It was so nice. Not everything has to be tried to force down my throat, you know. I'm not forcing it down your throat. You know what I mean? I'll bring it to you. The lack of chips and anything else he likes eating is getting to Dave. Behind closed doors, he's really struggling. I just lost it and I basically just just broke down in a heap on the floor. Why well, can't I eat the chips? No, I can't eat the chips. It's stupid, but I want them, but I don't want them. And I was just, I was so angry. He started to cry, which was really, like, really upsetting to watch and really shocking because I've been with him for you know, over a year and a half now and never ever seen him cry that whole time. It's just everything was just getting on top of me and I just... I just want to be happy. That's all I want. Dave's hit rock bottom, but Felix is on hand to help. Well, Dave, I mean, um, you're going through a very hard time, and I think you've got a lot of uh, cumulative stress building up there. So, you know, you've got to give yourself a break as well. So that means is you can eat chips from time to time. You know, people do that. We just don't want to make it your your one and only staple. Just just to check, Dave, were there any other emotions you're aware of, of that played into this? The trying the new foods has been sort of a strain, and like as it as it would be. Um, then there's been the whole moving to uni thing, like, then sort of knowing that it's sort of like, even though me and Claire aren't breaking up, we're sort of like, we're living apart as soon as I go to uni. It, it is a, a time of lots of fast changes happening and change is stressful. So uh, the fact that you've had a little, little bit of a experience of feeling overwhelmed, hey. Give yourself permission to be overwhelmed, you know, from time to time. Yeah. Cool, thank you very much, dude. All right, Dave, See you later. take care. Bye. Okay. So Dave takes Felix at his word and heads for the chippy. Hello there. Uh, can I get a 130 chips and a sausage and then a small chips as well, please? Oh, I want that vinegar. Oh, here you go. Thank you. Thank you. Don't be sad. It's back to the house with his stash. The first chips he's eaten in over two weeks. <laughs> well, are you as good as you remember? Oh, better, because I haven't had them for a while. Oh, they are really nice. <laughs> I hope this doesn't make it more difficult for you, Dave. Mm. See, I think you're not enjoying them as much as you thought you were going to. Well, I'm not enjoying them as much as I used to. That's good. Before I had them, I was really looking forward to them and sort of like, there was sort of that, that bit of excitement, like, oh, I haven't had chips for a while, so what are they going to taste like? I hope they're going to be as good as before. And then after eating them, no, they, they, they weren't as enjoyable of, as they were before. I think within trying all these new foods, you sort of, I've, I've felt a lot better after eating a meal. And I know that the reason I'm feeling a bit gloggy and a bit heavy is because of the chips. There's now just one week to go before Dave must eat his first proper dinner with his family in nearly 20 years. Dave is still struggling to adapt to his chip-free challenge, so Felix has to hope an exciting new experience will help him take the plunge. Dave, have you ever been on one of these things before? No, never. <laughs> I'm really excited. It looks, yeah. it looks cool as hell, yeah. It's yeah, not yeah. the kind of thing you usually do, is it? No, no, yeah. Not Travelling on the bus is pretty much the... the 
the, the peak of my excitement. So you up for it? Definitely, oh. definitely up for it. Hey, it's action, Dave. It is. <laughs> How you think you're ready for this challenge? Yep, very ready. Okay, I'm well, excited. you've got just one mission to do. Okay. So just to enjoy yourself. Cool. You can do that? I'm pretty sure I should be able to, yeah. <laughs> Moment he's thinking about four miles per hour, which is uh, a bit less than walking speed, I think. Dave, go a bit faster! It's the one. What I'm really hoping for Dave to get out of this is he starts off apprehensive, tentative about something, and then you realise you can really have fun with it. There's a monotony about things, so I think it's really important that he is more adventurous across the board. How was that, man? You did full throttle, didn't you? Yes. Yeah, I thought you did. That was brilliant. <laughs> I was so... a bit nervous about it, but then I was like, no, just go for it. I was like, literally most of that was full throttle. I was, I was enjoying it so much. It was well, great. In life, if you take a little bit more risks, you can actually enjoy life a lot more. Yeah. And now, the trick is to do that with your food. Like, I totally understand what Felix is saying about, you know, why not apply that to food? Why can you not just think, screw it, I'm going to throw caution to the wind. If I love it, then great. If I don't, then I don't. That's fine. So I think I just need to be a bit more adventurous now. It's great. Yeah, good. Now feeling more positive and making progress, Charlotte decides it's time to move his eating to the next level. Hello again. How's it going? Good. What Dave really needs to learn now is to start to understand how you mix flavours, how you can mix new foods together, and how he's going to really start enjoying that. Good and shame day. Oh, yes! Whoa! Charlotte hopes teppanyaki, a Japanese way of cooking that quickly and easily mixes flavours together, is something that might appeal to Dave, especially with his student days ahead. You? Thank you. Enjoy your meal. Thank you very much. Thank you. How was that for you? That was uh, thrilling. That was really good. <laughs> I enjoyed that. What did you take in terms of watching the chicken being cooked, for instance? It was. It looked delicious when it was just being fried and it was just being nice and it was being juggled about and yeah. just slowly being cooked. And also, you can just see how simple it is to get flavours in there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And also, he used an enormous amount of garlic, which is the most simple flavour you can possibly get. And every culture has garlic in it, pretty much. OK. Shall we go? I don't know. We'll go for a bit of chicken, yeah. Mm. It's really nice. Mm-hmm. That's a world away from just trying something on its own, isn't it? Mm. And yeah, it was really, really good. I really enjoyed it. Like, you asked me that two weeks ago, said so, like, I'd be eating there, like, it wouldn't have happened. So it was like a really nice thing to try. Dave may be doing well, but Felix believes that to truly put his chip eating days behind him, he needs to clear the air with his father about the miserable mealtimes of the past. Trouble is, they haven't seen each other for over two years. I haven't seen my dad for a while. We speak sometimes, but not very often. After some of the stuff that Felix said, I thought that we sort of really needed to talk to each other and sort something of out. Hello, Hello Papa. So <laughs> Looking well. Thanks. What's with the glasses? I'm blind because of you. Oh, you're blind yeah. with me now for that one, are you? Should we sit down? Hey, how yeah. are you? It's because I'm oh, okay. I'm okay. Yeah. Looking good, mate. It's Different. Cause it's because of your crappy eyesight. I can't imagine you with glasses on at all. I've had to. How long you had them in? Uh, a few weeks. Like, I know when I was a kid, I really didn't like green stuff, like the broccoli and the sprouts and stuff. At the end of the day, I thought I was right, and you were just plain up. Yeah. When it was started off, I suppose, you know what I mean? So, it was just one of them things, but like I say, it's, uh, 
we can see your point of view and my point of view, and but at the time you don't think of these things. No. You don't think about the situation that might be years later. You just don't want to think right. It, well, that's it. At the end yeah. of the day, it's uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's, uh, you used to eat food normal. So why suddenly change? Some somewhere along the line, something something happened, oh, I don't and know. Uh, that's it. But that's many many years ago. Now. I haven't got a memory that good. Yeah. Well, like I said, we'd like to say you can eat normal stuff. Before Friday, I hadn't eaten chips for two weeks. So you nearly started there, then? No, no, I was, I was trying fruits and vegetables. It's good to you know, <laughs> know that you are trying these other things. So if I made you one of my special fish pies... I've never tried a pie. No, it, well, it's like smoked haddock, normal haddock, cheese sauce, mashed potato... Uh, it's just all full of good stuff, you know what I mean? Tasty. Stuff. Maybe, yeah. I was, I was surprised you know, to hear, you know, what, what, what's going on. And what you're saying to me now is just unbelievable. Yeah. OK. Well, oh, I'm going to go then. Yeah, hey, take care. Love to see you. And we're so glad everything's working out for you. Yeah, it's good. And you're going to come up and we're going to cook for each other and you're going to teach me how to cook some beef. It was really nice seeing my dad, actually. It's weird, because you haven't seen him so much. He looks a bit older than my last time I saw him, so... It's just nice to see him, and hopefully he'll come up to, uh, he'll come up to Lincoln and he can sort of teach me how to cook some stuff. The day has arrived for Dave and Claire to move out of their Birmingham home. Claire's going to Sheffield with her dad, while Dave's off to Lincoln University with his mum. Last ones. Give it a try. <laughs> hey, look at that. I love you. I love you more. <laughs> oh, sorry. Just gonna miss you at all. Miss you more. See you later. I'm a little bit sad to leave the house. You know, that's where me and Claire first moved in together, so it's got loads of memories for us, but, you know, also looking forward to uh, moving into the, the new flat and seeing what that's all like and making new friends and stuff, so. first day of uni and the moment Dave has been dreading. He's not sure what the other students will be like or what they will make of his eating habits. Which course are you going to be taking? Uh, computer games production. Hopefully. What about you? You doing that one? Yay! I'm Dave. I'm Jose. Jose? How's it going, man? And then if you want, we'll meet you over there. I'm going to go grab a drink or something. Dave befriends two lads from his computer course, but it's not long before the dreaded topic of eating is on the menu. What are you looking at? An ultimate tower burger? See, I don't know what to have because I'm not eating chips, so everything comes with chips. Well, you could always go for a jacket potato. <laughs> I've never eaten a jacket potato in my life. It's pretty good. You reckon? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm iffy about the cheese. No, I'll, no, I'm going to go cheese and bacon. I'll go for it. Dave has never tried a jacket potato, but he decides to take the risk. After all, that's just like a big chip, right? Uh, jacket potato with bacon cheese. Can you thank us? There we go. Thank you. That's me. Um, how do you eat a jacket potato? You can either eat the skin or leave the skin. I think I'm going to leave the skin. It looks like there's a lot of cheese. This is what I was afraid of, that it's just going to get overpowered with cheese. Go on, just eat it. It's not going to kill you, is it? It could do. What if it's slightly poisoned? No, it's not going to kill me. 
Mm. Look. It's kind of like mashed potato, but without it being mashed. Mm. And I really think it could, it would benefit from some vinegar. Mm. That was okay. That was. I didn't enjoy the, the salad after it, but I think the bacon could have used some work. But as a whole, I can now cook, I can now eat jacket potatoes, there you go. It's been fun so far. It's, it's been nice meeting some new people, and uh, they just seem to be like, oh, OK, you haven't tried it, which is always nice. You know, it's, it's nice not to be ridiculed for something that I haven't done and more supported for it. So they, they just seem like nice guys. I think we're going to get along. It's going to be good. Dave settles in quickly to his new life at university. And he even buys himself a wok and starts experimenting in the kitchen. But there isn't a veg in sight. With just two days before the final challenge, Charlotte decides to spring a surprise visit on Dave. Hello. Hello, darling. I wasn't expecting you up here. Have you been cooking? I have been cooking. What have you been cooking? Uh, I've mainly been having those egg noodles. They're delicious. And what about the greenery? Uh, there's only been little bits of greenery. So that's your kind of bl your blind yeah. spot is the greenery. Yeah, the greenery. Charlotte has one last chance to get Dave over his green phobia before the final challenge. Can we take one of those? Thank you. Thank you very much. And she's risking it all with a salad. Four salads for six pounds. A bargain. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. So I've prepared this salad. There's a lot of greenery there. <laughs> so you can see a lot of leaves, but a lot mm -hmm. of colour too. Mm -hmm. So it's, again, it's that mixing of flavours that we did. Yeah. So it, it tempers that taste that you're not necessarily used to. We're going to put together something that's going to bring this salad alive. Some dressing. What well, we're going to start with is a uh, really simple one, so olive oil, some lemon juice. Also going to add a little bit of honey in there. Okay. Her plan is to disguise the taste of the vegetables with some dressings. And there you go. So how does that look to you? What's your brain telling you about that at the moment? It just looks... Now it just looks like wet leafiness and I can just get the smell of green and beetroot. Let's go for it. That was some chewy green. And? Tastes like green. So how was the dressing? Did that make a difference? I couldn't taste any dressing. Charlotte's determined to try whatever it takes to get yeah. Dave to actually enjoy the salad. I really don't enjoy the texture of those avocados. What was that? Bits. I'm not really sure if the salads and dressings experiment worked with Dave. He's quite reticent towards the whole green thing, as he calls it, but he really, really was trying, really putting big mouthfuls in. So there's a lot of positive stuff there. I just don't know how much he's going to try that on his own when he's left his own devices. It's just 24 hours before Dave must eat a roast dinner with his family. Claire has come to visit him for moral support. But the conversation quickly turns sour. So, have you been eating any vegetables since you've been at uni, Davey? Um, only those beans and the, the, the beanie sprout things. Bean sprouts? Yeah. And that is it? I haven't really been cooking that much. Yeah. It's just like, no. Why? I know, it's just, it's not, like, once I get into a routine, it's just because it's the first week, everyone's going out, everyone's meeting each other, everyone's, like, bonding together. Yeah. So it's just sort of been... I don't want you to go back to 
just eating the stuff you can whack in the oven just because no, you I'm don't have gonna. to think about it. I'm not gonna just go back to that. I should hope that you know that I won't. Okay. It's nice to know you have faith in me. Dave. I've done nothing but have faith in you the whole time. Okay, nothing but support you, you know, trying to help you, listen to you. I've done nothing but good stuff. And then you sit there and say that. Four weeks and just one bag of chips later, it's time for Dave's final challenge, to eat an entire roast dinner while his family look on, something he hasn't done since he was four years old. I think the thing that I'm least looking forward to is the, the green stuff, the broccoli, or just the meat. I think the meat could be a problem, because I usually have a problem just chewing the meat. And the whole family will be there for the first time in over 10 years, including his dad. Well, I can't remember how long it's been since I've seen him eat properly. Um, so if, uh, I think if he does get through it today, I think it'd be uh, amazing. He's gonna give it his best shot. Um, I think he's gonna do really well. And just the fact that he's here and he can even contemplate doing it is amazing. I, I don't actually think he's gonna do it today at all. And Felix and Charlotte are there for moral support. All right, Dave. Hello. Hello, darling. Hello. 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 Hello, Hello nice sir. See you again. You okay? I'm good, man. How are you yeah. feeling about today? Uh, okay. I'm okay. A bit nervous. A bit nervous, but I'm okay. We haven't eaten together like this for like 10, 10 years or so. It'll be unusual. Yeah, it'll be unusual. And it'll be unusual for me to eat the same things as them as well. So you're going to tackle the vegetables? I'm going to have to tackle <laughs> the vegetables. <laughs> Just make it about food again. Go and meet your family then. Good luck, Dave. The only thing that might hinder his progress today is that he's not been trying that greenery at home on his own. So he's got quite a large leap to make. Dave dreaded family roast dinners as a boy. Will he be able to stomach this one? Oh, go on, lad. Wow. You made more veg than me, son. Are we going to tuck in then? This looks well, awesome. David. Cheers, son. Nice day. Cheers. Yeah. Yeah. Doing well. Very impressed because all his veggies are gone. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well done. Even though Dave has managed to tackle the vegetables, he still has a plate full of meat and potatoes to get through to finish the challenge. While all the others have finished, Dave is still munching. Well, he's getting down there, son. I'm proud. Yeah, I'm proud. I'm done. Not bad. I didn't Can't think I'd see the day. Can't believe oh, no. it. I didn't. Yeah. Really proud. How do you feel, son? Full. Proud. Oh, nice, son. <laughs> hello. Uh, hello, hello, hello. That looks like a very empty plate. Yeah. And there were vegetables to start? There were oh, yes. vegetables to start <laughs> with. Your favourite broccoli was on yeah. there. Yeah, <laughs> did you enjoy the broccoli? It was OK. Hey, that's a start. Okay. We're getting there. That's, that's, yeah. that's a step upwards. Can I get some reactions from people around the table? As a family, I think this has been a bit of a milestone, cos I can't remember the time when we've sat down all together and eaten a meal where David's had the same as everybody else. So mm. it's been absolutely mind-blowing. I'm just so proud of you. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> really, oh. I'm so proud of you. Yeah, I was just so surprised he has tried it all. And he's uh, done better than you have, Rob. Yeah, he's done better than me. <laughs> I'm, so I'm a bit more fussy than this. <laughs> well done, son. Well done. Yeah, mate. Oh. Oh. All right. I, when I first started and I said, like, I didn't want to feel like a kid anymore, I just wanted to be an adult. And that was definitely a step towards feeling like an adult, being able to eat with everyone else, just having a, a nice meal with them all.
I think he has banished those old demons and written a new chapter, which is exactly my hope for him. And job well done. I just, I'm really ecstatic that he enjoyed it so much. I mean, he ate all the vegetables and he enjoyed it. I think he's going to be really positive. I think he's going to take that to uni and I think he's starting a whole new life. We can do so many things now that we could never do before. It's like a whole new world. It's, this has changed his life. Well, well son. Mm -hmm. So proud of him. He's great. You know what I mean? He's uh, really chuffed. You know what I mean? Proud of me, son. So. I'm just going to carry on expanding what I'm eating. There will still be chips in the diet, but everyone has those chips in their diet. It just won't ever be to the extent where it's every single day, twice a day, not even like every single week. It's just going to be every once in a while like everyone else has them. So I'm happy about that. One month later and Dave's dietary revolution is still going strong. I can actually honestly say I don't miss chips at all. It's now no longer a thing of like, oh, I'm hungry, I wonder where the nearest chip shop is. It's like, oh, I'm hungry, oh, I wonder if this place does nice sandwiches or this place has got some nice food on the go. I'm no longer having to just look at the kids' menu to order food, and I'm basically just a normal person. And that's what I've always wanted, just to be able to not feel like I'm singled out because of what I'm eating. I don't have something ruling my life like chips did. Now it's more like, I'll try little bits of, sort of greenery food and salad and stuff. I'm still not its biggest fan by a long shot, but at least now I'm still trying it and I, I may come to eventually love salad, maybe.